Yeah, so today we are going to talk about the providing user-friendly interfaces, the, uh, the next category or the next purpose of the operating system. So now in nowadays, if you can see, like if you can see on the screen uh, of my operating system, as well as when you are using a particular device, it is having an operating system installed into it, right? So this operating system, without the operating system, we won't be able to run the other softwares on it, as well as if the operating system is not very attractive, we are like a little bit lazy to uh, use a uh, uh, that kind of operating system, right? So the user friendliness, uh, as well as the attractiveness of the operating system or the appearance in other words, uh, will keep the user interact with the device for a long time, right? So when you are given a, a Android phone or an iPhone or particular tablet, the best reason or the, or the most common reason that you are sticking to it because of the new appearance of those as well as the facilities that is given by the operating system, right? And, but if you think about like uh, 20 to 30 years back, right? So the operating systems were not that attractive, not that user-friendly uh, with, uh, uh, with the operators or with the users. Uh, therefore, the personal computer or like personal device concept was very uh, uh, remote concept or like a very uh, unusable concept, uh, like really usable con concept on those days, right? Now here <clears throat> in your book, they have shown you the uh, two different uh, types of the uh, operating systems. One is called the command line interface. The other one is called the graphical user interface. So nowadays, what we are using is a graphical user interface, right? Which has a lot of graphics and attractive images, icons, shortcuts. There are many different things, right? But before that, before that, the Windows Micro, uh, the, the Microsoft uh, Corporation were introducing, the, uh, introducing their operating system using this uh, command line interface, which we call disk operating system in short form we call it dos uh, as their first operating system so look at how dos is looks like it's it's a black screen having lots of letters and we need to know some particular commands to uh, get interact with the uh, operating system so due to the uh, particular command it will show us the particular output right so if you want to experience this just Press your start button and when you uh, have the start menu just type cmd so it will give you the command prompt right so command prompt is the exact uh, appearance gives you the exact appearance how the cli worked right so if you click it you will be getting the same appearance as your book can see so now think about a computer which has no any uh, desktop or kind of things, just this black screen with a lot of letters, right? So it will be very, uh, neither, very dull device to use, right? Or like, uh, it's not very interesting device to use when you've got a lot of letters and commands and all these things in your device, right? Because there is no any images, no videos, no audios. So it's, uh, it's kind of a primitive one, right? So if you want to uh, interact with this, you need to know certain commands regarding this, right? So now in your, in your book, they have uh, uh, take the command date, right? So once I uh, type the date and press enter, the current date is, they show it set 10, 23, 2021. So that Saturday, it is uh, uh, October 23rd, 2021, they say, all right? And uh, in case, if you press di type dir and press enter you can see the uh, uh, the folders which is there on your <coughs> uh, on your particular directory that you are in now here directory in the sense they say uh, the location that we are referring to right now if i uh, open my windows explorer and show how my D drive is. So you can see my D drive has some folders like Amma, Anula. Likewise, there are different kinds of folders. Now I can show you the same 
folder list from the uh, this from, from this command prompt, right? So when we don't have a graphical user interface in short form, a GUI, we had the facility of uh, showing or like retrieving the folder structure uh, in this kind of an interface, right? So I can change to the D drive by typing D colon. You don't need to know about these things, right? And if I say DIR and press enter, can you see? Can you can you see the uh, names of my folders appear in there? Amma, Anula, this car, this color test printer DOCX that is a file. Color test printer PDF that is a file. Desktop images it is a folder. EB exam it is a folder. Guru Getter schedules ICT likewise likewise. There is a list of folders. So in front of the folders the DIR notation is given. In front of the files they are not showing anything else. Right. It will just a second. Okay, so this is how it was. I remember like uh, my mother was talking about the computing that she had learned. Uh, it was something like this. She was telling it was a very black screen and she don't remember how good it was, right? Uh, in her, uh, not the school days, like uh, back in uh, 80s sometimes, right? So she was telling it is just, it's not looks like your devices uh, on these days. It was a just black screen with a lot of letters. I mean, you have to remember the commands and all these things. Then what I was telling with her is like, uh, if I was there, I won't be able to like uh, look into a computer because it is a very dumb device uh, uh, comparing to today, right? But we never know, we never know because the computer today uh, has been developed up to this point. It is because of these things. Right, so uh, like not even us, like, like not unlike us, there were people who were passionate about uh, the things, so they developed something uh, uh, attractive and something very user friendly for us. So we have to be thankful for those who made this a nice one, right? Uh, like, uh, and and it is being attractive to get addicted nowadays, right? So uh, which is not a good thing, but uh, still. Uh, there are benefits when it comes to the uh, user-friendly operating systems, right? So from this interface, then they convert into an interface like this, right? Now, this is called a graphical user interface. So you got graphics, you got background graphics, you got icons, you got shortcuts, right? You got uh, files and folders in, in graphical mode. Right, you got a Windows Explorer. There are many different things here, right? So in a graphical user interface, we introduce these items on a graphical user interface according to this WIMP uh, concept, right? Windows, icons, menus, and pointers, right? So you can see many different windows. This is a window, right? And this is also can be considered as a window, right? And there are icons, as I told you, like there are shortcut icons, there are application icons, many different icons are there. And menus, these are called the menus. Now they are coming in a ribbon type, right? Or a, or a, or a tab kind of way, right? So these are called the menus, right? And the pointer, which is the mouse pointer that we are using over here. So when it comes to the graphical user interface operating systems or like the operating system which contains a graphical user interface or a GUI, it has these four components inside it. We call it WIMP, All right? So WIMP is the one which helping us to do uh, our day-to-day -day works and keep us on track and keep us attractive to this uh, operating system. And again, it's not only the graphics, the user friendliness, right? So when when uh, like when it comes to the user friendliness, the best example is like uh, to take about the user friendliness of a mobile device, right? 
even my little one like you now she is 4 years old she was uh, uh, about to uh, choose the youtube the uh, youtube kids icon and was able to play the videos that she want uh, when she was like 2 year plus right so 2 year plus means like uh, she can't even utter a word right so it was just a fractions of word she was telling but she knows how to unlock the mobile phone and choose the youtube icon and play a video so it is that user friendly now right so that is that is what you call the user friendliness with the minimum knowledge users will be able to interact with the device right that is what you call user friendliness right nowadays this user friendliness is like uh, taken up to a higher levels like voice commands are there face recognitions are there the applications like siri the applications like google assistants are there so we we are just talking to the devices like we talk uh, to some other people right not exactly like that but even for some extent we would, uh, we will be able to interact with the device like that right so it is like now it is like going beyond user friendliness and it's time it, it it's it is trying to get on uh, a conversation like uh, what what happens in between man to man right so it is the first step to the artificial intelligence so it's it's slowly growing right so uh, very soon very soon there will be uh, 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 the, the there will be a era where the science fictions are getting true uh, in front of our eyes right so now it is like uh, as i told you like increasing the technology will increase the facilities in the uh, computer world as well as the entire world right okay and um, here they are talking about the utility programs right um, and we we discuss about the utility programs previously when we are talking about the uh, categorization of the softwares so we we talked about that softwares are majorly category into two separate parts which is the system software and the application software so later application software will be divided into three parts which is the operating systems utility softwares and the language translators right so when it comes to the utility softwares there are a big list of utility software that you can install into your computer and as well as uh, it comes with the operating system some of the utility software are come comes with the operating system as well like this uh, disk scanner disk defragmentation uh, and uh, file and data compression facility task manager right uh, system diagnosis tool sometimes it comes with the operating system and sometimes the manufacturer is uh, able to install it antivirus software again some of the antivirus software are comes with the operating system some we should purchase and install clipboard every operating system has that utility software data synchronization software it is again uh, some third party tools right disk partitioning software which is come uh, screen saver now screen saver is uh, uh, not here actually right uh, and system profilers right network utilities kind of things now if you if you think about this disk defragmentation look at uh, your windows uh, operating system has this utility software one is the disk cleanup it is uh, one of the uh, disk scanning methods and defragmentation and optimizing devices it is another uh, utility software that we can have so this uh, disk defragmentation we need that uh, to clean our devices or like uh, uh, this will help us to uh, take fragmented data visiricha data thana thana disk ekey visirila thiyena data right so fragmented data will be collected into a one portion so the empty uh, places or empty slots in the operating system uh, not the operating system in the on the hard disk will be uh, gathered together so it will allow us to uh, uh, optimize our hard disk or, or uh, make our efficiency increase using this disk optimization or disk defragmentation right and you and me both know about the task manager right i have i have shown this to you several times i think right so this will uh, shows you what are the uh, processes or what are the task 
that is carried out in the computer, as well as this, uh, if, if we go for more details, we can see a detailed view of these particular things, so like the performance of the hardwares like CPU, memory, disk, my internet connection, graphical processing units, right, I got two, right, and I can go for the app history, what are the applications that I have used, and the startup applications, right, and uh, users who are using this, details about the, uh, uh, the processors that is being run and services kind of things. There are many, there are many, right? So it is something comes with the uh, operating system, right? And file and data compression, uh, that is something uh, common for a lot of operating systems. Like we can uh, right click on any particular thing and we can uh, compress it, right? So if I say send to a compressed file, this zip folder, it will uh, shows us uh, this particular folder as a compressed one, right? And for a compressed one, we can right click and extract it. That means compress karna kela kya ne? Aku lala guli karla tiye na kela, right? So that a pita bolon capacity ko chutta mitra adu karna, right? So as well as you can extract it, you can extract things like uh, most of the uh, game playing people do uh, does know about this extraction and all these things because a lot of uh, game files they come up with an uh, compressed file so we have to extract it and uh, install it right so uh, compression is given uh, by default by the operating system right and uh, about the six system diagnosis tools now uh, you know like uh, diagnosis uh, is not something which is available uh, with the with a lot of operating system but here now here uh, i got windows memory diagnostic that is regarding the uh, our memory in this particular pro, uh, computer right as well as you can see like i got this hp pc hardware di diagnostics now it is it is installed by the manufacturer right now my laptop is a hp brand one so i got a hp uh, diagnostic tool so these diagnose tools will uh, check our uh, hardwares as well as the softwares and give us a report uh, regarding what kind of uh, uh, problems or what kind of things that we have to do regarding our system, right? So I can go for information testing, system test, component test, those kind of things. Now, uh, let me... Uh, if I go for the information, uh, system information, it will give me this system information. And if I go for the system test, it will give me different kinds of tests. Disk read verify, video memory fast check, battery check, wireless IRQ, wireless ROM, fast CPU stress test. So those kind of things are facilitated by the uh, operating system as well as the third party tools, right? And uh, the antivirus software, the operating system, now Windows, it has their own antivirus software, Windows Defender, right? Uh, now it is renamed as Windows Security Settings, right? So Windows Security. So uh, I can do the uh, uh, scanning and all these things uh, using Windows Security, right? So it shows viruses and threat protection, the account protections, virus network protection, all kinds of things are there, right? So I can do different kinds of uh, controlling and scanning uh, type of things using these kind of utility softwares. And always remember, utility softwares are there for us to help. We are not using these things in our day-to-day -day life to do our day-to-day -day things, right? But they will uh, stay on the background and will help us to do things right now. If you take antivirus software as an example, it will protect us from the malwares, right? We, but we are not uh, dealing with the malwares, right? Uh, the, operati the operating system and the antivirus software, specifically antivirus software, always look for the external devices and the people and the, and the, and the programs and the resources which is flows outside the computer and checks whether uh, it contains a malware kind of things, right? Malware is a software which can be harmful to our system, right? So likewise, uh, lots of things are there, right? So all the uh, 
utility softwares are like helping us to manage the things or like uh, manage our operating system in a smooth manner, right? Now here they have talked about um, different kinds of uh, utility softwares, which is disk partitioning. And uh, then they are, they are going to talk about the disk formatting and the defragmentation. Now disk partitioning means that you have to uh, understand now when we purchase a particular hard disk from the market, that hard disk will not be able to fix into our computer and uh, use it as it is, right? If you think about an external hard disk, nowadays external hard disks are pre-formatted, right? Pre-formatted and uh, ready to use. But uh, if you think about internal hard disks, right? A device a computers in uh, other desktops atule high karna hard disk can it work if we purchase a new hard disk that cannot be fixed into our computer like uh, inside our computer and make use of it before we uh, make use of it we have to partition that disk and we have to format the disk right now partitioning means making your hard disk divide logically, right? What do you mean by logically divide? Now, if you look into my hard disk, right? In this PC, I, you can see uh, it is indicating two separate uh, portions of my hard disk. So now this means I don't have two hard disk in my computer. This is only a one hard disk which is there in my computer, but it is logically divided into two parts. Logically, not physically, logically, right? So like log dividing these partition or like creating these portions logically is called partitioning, right? So when we purchase a fresh hard disk from the market, before we store the data into it, we have to partition it at least it should be partitioned as a one single partition, right? Then, if a hard disk is logically, without that, we won't be able to store the data, right? So if your hard disk is big in capacity, you can go for a two to three or three to four partitions, right? And in most of the cases, lots of hard disks, will be divided into two major portions. Uh, one is to install the operating system, right? And the other one is to install the devices or uh, uh, I'm sorry, the other softwares, right? And, and majorly for the uh, storage purpose, right? So when you are having, a, uh, having the portion or the partition to install the windows, if you, install the windows into it, all the programs and all other things are installed into the windows installed partition, right? And if you open the windows uh, partition here, you can see this program files uh, inside it, as well as you can see this windows folder inside it. So windows folder contains the windows operating system, program file folders will contain the programs which we have installed in on the operating system. Right, so by default, if you are installing something, it will be installed into your uh, C drive. Generally, when it comes to the windows, that means uh, the partition which has windows itself, right? And the next part or the other portion, I can use it for my own creation, so like my own uh, categorization. So the best way to use a computer hard disk is having two partitions inside it, right? It doesn't matter whether you have three, four or more, but at least two should be there. One particular thing is for the uh, Windows installation and the other particular portion or partition should be, should be for the storage. I'm saying this, if any virus attack or malware attack has happened to your system, it always try to attack to the operating system. 
right? So where you have the, what is the place that the operating system has installed? Attack will happen on that particular partition or folder, right? So once that attack has happened, it is not easy to clean that out, right? Like, uh, like it's, it's nearly impossible, right? So in that case, what we are doing is if a malware infected to our computer, we format the partition uh, which contains the operating system. So formatting means like we clean out the everything and we put all the things newly into that thing, right? So then the rest of the partitions can be scanned and get rid of the viruses, right? So because of that, it's better you have two partitions. So your, your details, your resources, your uh, documents will be safe with the other partition which does not have the operating system. All right. So when it comes to the partitioning, that is what do you need to know. So they illustrate here how a hard disk uh, is uh, like is there without or like uh, before the partitioning. Here, what's happened when it is being partitioned. So if this is one disk, one physical, one new disk. So once it is being partitioned, this is being partitioned to two separate portions, which is C and D. Right. And then this partitioning, yeah, Ravindu, uh, partitioning means like uh, separating your hard disk into two logical portions or two or more logical portions, right? So under the partitioning, you can create just one logical uh, partition as well. But generally what we are doing is we create two or more logical portions in your hard disk. So as you can see it on the picture, this new drive does not have any portions. And once it is partitioned, it will be considered or like it will be recognized as D and C drives, right? And why do we need partitioning? There are several different reasons, right? Uh, so like uh, when we need to save different items in different places, Right. So now think about that you do not have uh, uh, more than one partition, just one, par uh, one partition is available in your computer. So you will be able to save all the things at the same place, same partition, right? When you have two or more, you can categorize those, right? Then you can save those things uh, in the different partitions, right? And uh, when, you, when you need to have more than one operating system, in your uh, computer, you need different number of partitions because when Windows is installed to a one particular partition, we won't be able to install uh, Linux operating system or other operating system into the same partition. We need to install the operating system, some other operating system to a separate partition. Right now, if you uh, search for the uh, disk management, right, in your uh, Windows computer. Right, uh, this disk management will show you what are the partitions that is been in your computer. Be very careful when you are working with this, right? This is another utility program. So as you can see, see uh, in Windows C, it is the bootable uh, part of mine, right? So then uh, new volume D, this is called a basic partition, right? So if I got now, as you can see here, it says health EFI system partition, health recovery partition, health recovery partition. So Windows operating system works like that. When we create a particular partition, it automatically creates the recovery partition, right? That is for their purpose, the operating system's purpose in case if it is being crashed or something, they have to save things in there, right? So likewise, these are the partitions which actually interact with me, right, in my computer, right? So these like uh, almost one GB space of a time, space uh, in my hard disk is uh, used for the backup purposes. 
right and uh, there are some other reasons like to meet requirement of the operating system mandatory that is separate partition is allocated for the operating system so those are kind of operating system specific details right so uh, here it is been uh, it's it's uh, described the c drive and the d drive about a particular uh, computer we have seen those things experienced those things so i'm not going to uh, describe it very much right and when it comes to the disk formatting now this disk formatting is kind of a thing where we have to do for storage devices to introduce what kind of a file that you are going to store right so first thing that you need to do the partitioning then you have to do the formatting so there are two major types of uh, file formats in uh, computing it is called uh, the i'm sorry uh, hold on a minute just a second people Yeah, so when it comes to the par partitioning, there were two types of partitioning, which we call the low level partition and the high level, uh, I'm sorry, low level formatting and the high level formatting, right? Here, we are not going to talk about that much of details, right? So when we are formatting, uh, we can format the device in two different file types, right? Earlier, we had something called FAT32 or like FAT system, file allocation table system, we call it. And nowadays we are having NTFS uh, system, new technology file system, right? So uh, these two are the uh, major file systems that is being used. And as well as there are many other file systems as well. So however, what is this file system is doing? It's like introducing the computer, which kind of files that you are going to store inside you and how those things are being uh, referred right so by doing the disk formatting the we are going to introduce that file system into our computer right so it's not sufficient to uh, have only the partition in part regarding the disk so you have to format this disk as well right so like formatting for the very first time it will format and uh, make the uh, necessary arrangement in the partition. But if you are trying to format something which has data inside it, right? So you can experience this with a pen drive as well, right? So when you fix a pen drive, if you can fix a pen drive and uh, do the formatting part as well, right? And be very careful when you are trying to do the formatting, right? Uh, because when you are uh, going to do the formatting, there will be a message saying uh, all your data is going to be lost. Right now, I have uh, installed a particular uh, pen drive. So I can uh, right click on this pen drive. Right, this is my pen drive. I'll right click on this and I can go for the format. So then it is asking me like uh, how I'm going to uh, format this particular device. And can you, can you see over here, right? It, it shows you the file system, see file system. It says FAT32, right? They have NTFS, EXFAT, right? So those kind of things, right? So if we go, for something like that, hold on a second, people. Now, where is this? Yeah. Now, you can choose a particular file system. It's better you go with the NTFS, that is the new technology file system, that is the common one. Allocation unit size, they have said 8192 bytes. 
right? So you can uh, format it, right? So there is quick format. And if I press start, it will give me this warning message. It says warning formatting will erase all data on the disk. To format the disk, click OK. To, to quit, click cancel, right? I'm clicking cancel. I'm not going to format it, right? But remember, when you format the things, right, or when you format a partition or a particular storage, if any data exists inside, it is going to clear out or like delete all the data on that particular disk. Uh, no, Ravidu, you can't take the same result by formatting and partition in Buddha. Partitioning means uh, dividing the disk logically into several different portions. Formatting means those portions, the divided partitions, will introduce with a file system and say, okay, this kind of files will be able to install or store inside you, right? It is two different kinds of things, right? So formatting is kind of a resetting, right? But resetting and formatting has two different uh, meanings. Reset will not uh, harm to your uh, end, uh, the, the the existing resources or existing, existing document. But formatting will get rid of everything, right? It will delete all the things and will make, it, the disk will be make a fresh one, right? But resetting, it is not something like that. Resetting will only reset the settings and all these things. And when it comes to the advanced resetting, there is something for the, uh, something similar with the partitioning and the formatting, right? Okay, so uh, after the formatting part, yeah, now you can see here, they have given you the picture before partitioning, how it was, after partitioning, so two uh, separate portions are being made logically. Once it has been partitioned, once it has been formatted, you can see it has been divided into small, small clusters where you can store the data inside it, right? So those are called disk formatting. And disk defragmentation, I, I'll explained it, uh, it to you earlier. So I told you, I told you fragmentation means like scatter, the data will be scattered around. That is what you call fragmentation. So due to this fragmentation, sometimes even though you can see the empty space or like the free space on your, uh, device or, or on the operating system, uh, they won't allow you to save the document. Most of the cases, it is because of this, the fragmentation. So how we are going to get rid of fragmentation, it is by defragmentation. So before defragmentation, given in the left-hand side, and after fragmentation, uh, given in the right-hand side. So you can see this blue color cells are stick together now. So frag earlier it was fragmented, now it is contiguous, right? So these kinds of uh, utility softwares are given by the operating system. Uh, Tesandu, we didn't write anything uh, so far, Buddha. We are just uh, talking uh, through the lesson. Now only we are going to write it, Buddha. So you didn't miss anything of writing. Right, so let's start getting these, these things down, right? So people, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, you don't need to, uh, yeah. Uh, it's better you put a, a heading or subheading providing user-friendly interfaces. Right, and under that, yeah, you better uh, highlight this, not highlight and copy down these things. 
plus these two. Let me know when you are done, people. Okay, one is done. How about others? All right, two are done. Is there anyone still writing the note? Okay, okay, Udamya, hurry up. Okay, are we done? Can we move forward? Right. So have the subheading command line interface. Yeah, this have this subheading. Yeah, copy these two lines. Okay, are we done?
Okay. Several are done. How about others? Wait, sir. Okay, okay. All right, can we move forward? Okay, so moving forward, graphical user interface. Yeah. Mm -hmm. this part these things let me know when you are done All right, one seems to be done. How about others? And people, uh, once we're done with this lesson, there is only two lessons to go. So when we are done with those two lessons, we are going to have a term end test, right? So then calling exam make it where the chatang done on it is a hemming hemming it they will learn karna right Okay, is there anyone still writing this?
Okay, Ravindu, keep writing. Okay, Ravindu, are you done? All right, so we are moving forward. And uh, yeah, now we are going to write about the utility programs in an operating system. So have the head in. Yeah, copy down this particular sentence. Oh, that's nice. I got to scared me. Don't mix them up. Right? So keep it as green and yellow. Right. <clears throat> Are we done with this? It's only the highlighted part, people. Okay, can we move forward? Anyone still writing? Okay. So people, uh, this page, uh, this particular thing, you have to copy to your uh, notebook at home, right? All these utility uh, software. So please mark it. It's in page number 144. Right, right, uh, this entire list, right? So it is from here to here, right? So it's in page number 144. Please leave the sufficient space for that, right? I think uh, one CR page will be enough. Right, and from the next page, you can put the heading disk partitioning.
Yeah, so regarding disk partitioning, copy this sentence. And as well as this line. Yeah, it's better you uh, write down the uh, entire paragraph under the disk partitioning. Let me know when you are done, people. Okay, one is done. How about others? All right. Ah, okay then, okay.
right okay so let's move forward mm -hmm. yeah so like uh, Yeah, write this sentence, people. Yeah, these two sentences. All right, one is done. How about others? Okay, shall we move forward? All right, so yeah, partition in the reason. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, don't go for a separate topic, people. Take this as the next point of the same paragraph or of the same note. This should be written and write only these things that I am uh, highlighting. Write only these four lines. Right, so 
you can uh, uh, write those as examples, people. Last three points, you can write those as examples. No, we don't need, you don't need to write the topic, uh, Ravindu. I continue the uh, paragraph. There could be many reasons for undertaking partition in. As an example, so you can give the next three uh, points, right? Okay, one is done. How about others? Okay, is there anyone still writing this? Okay, okay, keep writing, keep writing. Okay, so we can uh... yeah, Ramindu, what it says, Puta, when we uh, install in the windows, uh, you can see it's been installed like this. So this is a one partition of mine. This is the other one. So Windows has installed into this partition. So if I want to install Linux. Either I can go with this partition or I have to make some other partition in my hard disk, then I have to install it to that particular partition. Buddha. I can't install the Linux to this Windows partition again. That's what it says. Buddha. Got it?
Yeah, Ravindu, are you still not done? Okay, okay, hurry up then. Okay, are we done? Yeah, uh, Ravindu, these are the things that we have said, uh, the advantages. When we need to save different items on different places, that is advantage, right? So like when we need to have more than one operating system in the same machine, that's an advantage of partitioning. So without partition, we won't be do that, won't be able to do that, right? To meet the requirement, uh, it's, it's not like, uh, to meet the requirements of the operating system, yeah. So like sometimes uh, it says this need this much of uh, free space and this much of partitioning. Uh, like the first two things can be taken as the advantages, Buddha. Right, so moving to the next part. Yeah, go with the uh, heading disk formatting. Uh, yes, Ravindu, it is like uh, being partitioned. Uh, it is good for our device in many different ways, right? You can uh, let me uh, let me uh, highlight the things and uh, explain it to you. This has to be written. Yeah, these things need to be written paper. And this part. Yeah, Ravindu, according to your, uh, your question, about your question, uh, it, it is always uh, benefiting or like uh, it, will, it will increase the performance of a device in many different ways, right? So since uh, all the, like, like uh, if, you, if you got one partition, all the data will be in a one single partition and it will take time to search things, right? Right, we can have one particular set of files in a one partition and another particular set of files on another partition. Right, so and making a lot of partitions will make no point, but having two to three or four partitions, like will make your device performance increased. And again, uh, about the uh, 
malware attack uh, example that I told you, it is another advantage of a partitioning. So when, when a virus has been attacked to your system, uh, it will only allow, uh, you only need to uh, format the partition which has the operating system only. Others not, do not need to be formatted. They can be scanned and uh, get rid of the malware. But for the uh, portion that contains the operating system, yes, you have to. Okay, one is done. How about the others? Two are done. All right, is there anyone still writing this?
right so from the latter part yeah these two things are important as well people so copy it down uh yeah then i'll uh, show you the things that you need to uh, write regarding the defragmentation at home right so then we are done with it so by next week we will be able to finish up the lesson Okay, is there anyone still writing this? Right, Ravidu, hurry up. Okay, can we move forward? Right. Okay, so please mark these things on your book people. Uh, it's better you uh, do it from a pencil. You should have the uh, heading defragmentation, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. Copy this part. Mark this part. Process where a single file is broken into different pieces and stored in different parts of the disk is called the fragmentation. Right. Please mark it, people. And then. Uh, yeah, copy this as well. Further, the empty spaces that are created in the disk due to the deletion of files is used to save new files, which cause fragmentation. As well as this line. Yeah, and this last one should be highlighted. Right, please mark these things. You have to uh, copy it at home. Right, and um, hold on. Yeah, yeah, that is enough, people. That's that's that is enough. And uh, people, uh, I want you to uh, draw this picture as well, right? At the end, before defragmentation and after defragmentation, right? So please complete that, right? Uh, I'll send you a screenshot as well to the uh, groups for the things that you need to uh, go regarding the defragmentation, right? Okay, so I'm going to end the session from here, people. So next week, we are going to end the operating system lesson. And if we had the chance, we are going to touch the PowerPoint or like the Microsoft presentation lesson as well, right? So thank you very much, everyone. I'll meet you on next week for the very same time, right? Thank you very, very much. Have a nice weekend, people. Right, everyone, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Right, okay, Buddha, thank you. Thank you very much.